Hello, my friends, and welcome to coverage of GP Birmingham. The format is modern, and you're in the booth with Riley Knight, and alongside me, of course, my good friend and colleague, Moraine Liebert, Christophe Gregoire, and Alastair Darroch have got underway already. And look at this. We can see now Mishra's Bauble kicking things off for Darroch. Alarm bells ringing for you, Moraine. What are we looking at here? Probably Dead Shadow. Might be... Oh, it's actually Junt with... Uh, Mishra's bubble to power up t Tarmogoyf. And uh, perhaps and even uh, Grim Flayer may uh, maybe yeah, put to bear as well from Duroc, as we see Overgrown Tomb come out from him. Now, I saw an Electrolyze in the hand of Christoph Gregoire. What uh, what could we what could we be looking at here? Good old Jeskai's. Jeskai Control. It's, yeah. not a d it's not a deck that has been making headlines recently. A lot of people sort of uh, preferring to go for the straight blue-white here. But look at this. Christoph Gregoire, he does believe that the red adds another dimension. Cards like... Uh, electrolyze cards like lightning bolt and maybe some post board options as well now after this thought sees we've got a couple of juicy options here for Duroc. yeah thought sees uh, think twice not the best option i'm guessing if you're playing a, a mid-range deck against a control deck uh, uh, electrolyze certainly a good pick there cryptic uh, command the, the other the final option command, yeah but sometimes crypto command a little bit too slow i mean if you're holding for example dark confident mm. you sure want to take the electrolyze or maybe gr grim flare I don't see a second land though. Ah, it's actually that it's the old version of that shadow with uh, uh, traverse the old wall. Gregoire, after having lose, lost his cryptic command there, he draws a sulfur falls. He's got a decent hand, really. I mean, it, it's just what you want. It's a, a nice sort of uh, little curve out there. You got it. Some early interaction, removal, counter spells, card draw. So he is in a good a good position here to uh, to make a move on this game. Duroc, on the other hand. Playing his cards close to his chest. Haven't got a good look at what he's working with here, but it's going to be the old Tarmogoyf here. Big Bad Thumper coming down on turn two. And already a 4-5. You mentioned earlier, Moraine, the, uh, the Mishra's Bauble really doing a lot of work, not, to, not just due to the fact that it obviously cycles, but it does make some of these cards like Tarmogoyf, like Grim Flayer, all the better. It's a little bit like, like Street Raid, but you don't have to pay two life. But it's an artifact, so it's it's better. It's usually better because you you kind of have more creatures in your deck. So for uh, uh, Tarmogoyf and Ulvenwald, you want more different card types, and the Mishra's Bauble is just a perfect one. It doesn't cost mana. It does delay you one turn because you don't really know what you're drawing. So there's a there is a disadvantage, but uh, there's certainly a lot of upside to it, especially going into the late game when you can just tutor up any creature with Traverse the Ulvenwald. Drog fetches out a ball, a, a blood crypt here, and we're going to see Death Shadow. So this is, as you mentioned, the older, older version of Death Shadow, the, the four-color Death Shadow here, relying heavily on uh, the ability, its own ability to, to damage its, its its life total here. Traditionally, now we see more uh, in the way of uh, Grixis. Yeah, Grixis. There is even Esper. Uh, walking around mm -hmm. uh, i'm not really sure what version uh, what i like about the green version is that there are more threats sometimes with the grixis version you don't have enough threats i mean you you only have four big delve creatures and four dead shadow so sometimes you'll just like totsies totsies your opponent play one guy but then you lose it to a path to exile and mm -hmm. then you don't have more gas after that i think the green version is slightly better at that but the grixis version has more permission has more discard spells so there's certainly uh, an upside there as well. Lightning Bolt, the draw for Gregoire here. Th at the moment, this Death Shadow is a 3-3, three, three, but uh, you'd have to think, Moraine, that uh, Duroc could have ways to change that. Yep. There's certainly a lot. He could even call against command himself, I think. Mm -hmm. Deal two to himself if he wants to. So Gregoire under a lot of pressure here. And he may be forced to act because he's about to take seven. And eight. Just going to take it. Look at this. Take it on the chin. What a champion. As we see another Mishra's bauble. Christoph Gregor, obviously a champion. There's no doubt about that. And flashing back think twice as well. That is the move. That's the signature move of a champion in my book. Flashing back think twice. My goodness me. Absolutely get it done here. It's over to Greg Wine now to rock drawing from his Mishra's bauble. So Gregor with a full grip, but certainly got his work cut out for him here. Still not sure about Electrolyze in this format. Mm. I mean, Lightning Bolt is already quite bad against that Shadow. That's very true. And then true. you've got the next level Electrolyze. I mean, obviously in other matchups it's a good card. But uh, if the most played deck is that Shadow, I don't think you want to be running too many of these Electrolyze. No, we've seen red removal really fall off the radar in recent times, Moraine, because, you know, Lightning Bolt used to be the best card in the format. By, by the widest of margins, it was... 
really, really just the most uh, the most played card, the most useful card, whatever else. And uh, these days, I mean, it's really taken a spell. We see even Red Deck's playing, what, two copies of it? Yep. And Electrolyzer I mean, seems to have gone Grix's the same way. Grix's Dead Shadow has now zero. Uh, some version of it. Yeah. And that's exactly the sort of deck you'd expect to see it in if it was flourishing. So, obviously, it's just uh, it's not in the spot that uh, it used to be here. Vale, Lightning Bolt. I mean, gone are the days where you can, you know, double Electrolyze two uh, Noble Hierarchs and draw your card or... Gain. Dark Confident. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Another seven here. Oh no! It's going to be lethal with this uh, with this mar marsh flat. So Gregoire has to do something about it. I don't see anything that he can do. However, he might even just say uh, he could have just said go. He's he's got the Colgans command, so he could deal the two damage with that to final two damage. Now I think Christoph has to resp uh, react. He will react probably with Electrolyze plus Lightning Bolt on the Tarmogoyf. Um, he might try. Can he finish off the Dead Shadow? If he wants to. So to rock down to nine after that fetch with the marsh flats here. I think if he electrolyzes plus bolt, I'll the rock is just gonna deal himself two damage with the with the Golgan's command. And a bolt here now targeting that Tarmogoyf. And we'll see what the rock has to say. He is on nine life. So the Tarmogoyf is dead. No? Okay, we'll see. The, the, sh the, the Death Shadow come across for four. Alizvar a little bit hurt by his lands. Only one green source, so cannot play both the Traverse and the, the Goyf. So just goes for Goyf, which is obviously a good choice. Just needs to pressure Kristoff. Kristoff needs to draw something here, and he draws an Electrize. He could have actually, if the Rock wouldn't have the kill this turn, he could have gone for the throw. He's got 10 burn together yeah. with the Electrolyze and Lightning Bolt from last turn. But now he has to electrolyze and hope to draw. I don't think even there's even a card he can draw. Well, no, he'd be looking for something like a Supreme Verdict in this in this instance here. But the at the moment... The two mana Supreme Verdict? No, no, off the t not, not drawing it from yeah. the electrolyze. But that would have been what he needed at the beginning of this turn here. Because right now there's nothing really for him to do. Duroc also with the Colligan's Command in hand. Seems like he's going to have the tools. He needs to finish this job here. Gregoire is uh, desperately searching through his hand, but it's just uh, two burn spells and a, a grip full of lands here. So Duroc is going to attack, get straight in there, not going to muck around here. I think the life totals Alice Duar is at... He's on nine. Yeah. Yeah, he's on nine. Gregoire is on four, but Duroc is on nine. It hasn't, hasn't been oh, updated he can, just yet. He could actually draw a path to exile. Okay, all right. Well, here we go. Electrolyze. Two damage to the... Another land, he draws so many lands. So the Death Shadow there after having two damage marked on it, and we see a Steam Vents drawn from Gregoire, and that is going to finish things off for game number one. Duroc picking things up very tidily. A slower hand from Gregoire and punished for it. Yep. So Gr Gregoire is going to reach for his cyborg, and he's got <laughs> a sawing salt in it because he didn't own a crumble to dust. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. He said, it's not going to matter anyway. Ew, I, will, oh I will have double red always. Yeah, sowing salt, obviously the old, the, the sort of the olden day tech against the, um, against the Tron decks, but these days, <laughs> these days, crumble to dust, we will get it done. Maybe, you know, well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell Meddling you, a, tell you a card that's really up and about at the moment is Ceremonious Rejection. Ah. Against Blue Tron, which is boarding it in against <laughs> Jeskai Control? <laughs> Probably not, but still, a bit of a corner case here. Let's have a look at what Gregoire's got. We've got Negates, we've got uh, Engineered Explosives, Celestial Purges, we've got a Vendillion Click, Rest in Peace Dispels. Looks like pretty standard sideboard technology from Gregoire here. Many one-offs. Many one-offs. That's, that's what you want to be doing in a Snapcaster Mage deck. You want as much diversity as possible to give you the answers you need at the time. See Anger of the Gods as well, nice early sweeper here. And is it Staticaster? One of these other cards in the same vein as Electrolyze that used to just be so, so, so backbreaking. It's still good against uh, the Court of Calling Collected Company decks mm -hmm. with Noble Hierarch, with uh, some uh, Birds of Paradise. It does a hell of a lot of work against uh, Lingering Souls, of yeah. course, which is going to be on people's radars. I wouldn't be too surprised to see the, the Electrolyzers go, oh, look at that one. Whoa. Good old Johnny Venger. Oh, there he is. Yeah, the, the red splash in the, in the Jesko decks, it's not huge. Certainly not as big as it used to be. You know, we used to have, remember, Jesko Nahiri. What happened to that deck? 
Yeah. Don't know what happened there, but uh, yeah, in in a world full of, uh, of bolts and electrolytes and that sort of stuff, the red used to be a lot more substantial than it is these days. Today it is just you know I saw a lightning helix there as well, but a Johnny Vengeant, one of the cards that the that that red opens up for the control decks. I think the Jeskai versions slightly faded into Fate Foretold, and then they just faded away. Yeah. That, that's kind of what happened, I guess. He did side in Rest in Peace, but then decided to take them out again. I think Rest in Peace is a good choice. I it shuts down mm. Grim Flare, Ulvenwall, uh, Tarmogoyf. Yeah, the Goyf Arena isn't going to get up, get uh, crack too many skulls if it's uh, a zero one. I mean, the bolts are not that. Nah, I don't like that. I think Rest in Peace is actually pretty good. I mean, against Grixis Death Shadow, you certainly want to bring in cards like Rest in Peace. Uh, Leyline of the Void, a little bit worse because you have to hit that one on turn zero. Mm -hmm. Whereas Rest in Peace just goes longer and still effective in l on turn two. Uh, it's, it works against Delve, it works against Snapcaster Mage, but this version does not have these cards. So it's less powerful, but there's then again Tarmogoyf and it'll uh, traverse. Another reason why we might see those Lightning Bolts staying in Moraine is because uh, the fact that Death, uh, Death Shadow plays so you know fast and loose with its life total, it does get pretty loosey-goosey with the amount of damage it does to itself. The Jeskai control deck can just go Bolt, Snap, Bolt, you know, just as we, as we saw you know, two, three, four years ago. But if you, if you think that's a strategy, then you either go for all of them okay. or for none. I so mean, keeping it in two, if that's your strategy, doesn't really make sense because you usually have to draw two of them and kill them from nine life, yep. like Bolt, Bolt, Snapcaster, Bolt. Mm -hmm. But if you have only one, it needs to be exactly six. It's op your opponent has to be at six or lower. It might work with the Celestial Colonnade, it's 10 damage, so that we're getting somewhere. But I think if that's your strategy, you just want to keep all of them. Well, Gregoire has opt opted to keep in those Lightning Bolts, and we'll see what influence they have as we move into game number two post-sideboard. Duroc will, of course, have augmented his deck as he's seen fit as well but he's sitting pretty now with a game up his sleeve a game to lose here to Gregoire of course he'll be looking to do the best he can to snag the early victory this hand is not looking too good for Duroc just yet Ooh, that's a tricky one Moraine I think that one has to go back he does have traverse to search the second line but no he doesn't have a source. threads oh he doesn't have a green source okay mm. nah eh. Send it back. Gregoire also not happy with his opening seven. So both of these fellas are going to go down to six and see if that uh, treats them uh, any kinder. I did see the Celestial Purchase being brought in. This used to be another absolute all-star heavy hitter for the uh, four white decks coming out of the board. And uh, it has fallen out of favour once again. An important tool in fighting Liliana of the Vale in addition to other, you know, other threats from... Uh, from yeah, these it, decks. It used to be your main answer to cards like Liliana of the Vale Dark Confident. Now mm -hmm. it's become your main answer to Dead Shadow. Mm. So... It's, I'm a bit surprised that it fall off the radar because it's still pretty good, I think, in them. But you don't want too many. It's it's kind of narrow. Uh, it's also good against the burn decks because mm -hmm. it deals with Goblin Guide, Swift Spear. Yeah. It's good against the junk decks because it, it handles Liliana, but I don't think you want to run too many. And I think Kristoff just has one. Just the one of there. We saw it in his opening hand. But now both these players down to six. This is looking better for Gregoire here. Yeah. This is like the perfect... Yeah. Six card That's hand. a nice. Uh, that is a nice keep here. What's Duroc working with here? Bobble, Inquisition, Lingering Souls. Oh, he's actually cited Lingering Souls, Lingering or Lingering. Lingering. Lingering Souls. Lingering. And he, Christoph didn't sideward his Static Aster. So Celestial Colonnade, the classic opening here for blue white base control players. And uh, as you mentioned, the perfect six for Gregoire. He's got early interaction. He's got ways to draw cards. A bit surprised. Oh, he's got the street trade. Yeah, so there, Alice, Alice Dwar, there, Alice there, something. Uh, actually, Mishra's bobbled himself before fetching. Uh, you'd say that's something stupid because you're going to shuffle away the card anyway, but he's holding a street rate. So if it would have been a card he wanted, he would have cycled the street rate first, paid to life to draw the card. Uh, so actually a good choice. In other cases, when you're going to fetch anyway, you might want to target your opponent just to get full information, especially if you're going to uh, fire off an Inquisition of Kozilek. Knowing what your opponent is drawing in the next turn is actually quite good. But in this case, targeting himself was definitely the right choice. So an interesting decision point here for Duroc. We've got Serum Visions and Path to Exile at 1 and Mana Leak at 2. What are you looking at if you're casting this Inquisition here, Moraine? I like... Oh, this is actually a tough one because he... His hand is kind of slow. I would have cycled the street trade before firing off the Inquisition. to Just go to get to some more information. Yeah. And I think it's either Serum Visions or Mana Leak. Because if you play the Goyf, Kristoff might have Path to Exile, but then you get another land for uh, Lingering Soul. So that's actually not the best card to take 
I like taking the mana leak here. Serum Visions is kind of air anyway. I mean, sometimes it's a good choice, but... Snapcast a Mage is a good draw for Gregoire. He's going to cast Serum Visions here. And he can find... He finds a Celestial... Oh, sorry, a uh, Hallowed Fountain off the top. Scrying two. Celestial Purge in addition to what looked like a uh, Scalding Tarn underneath it. Things developing reasonably for Gregoire, although uh, those lingering souls on the horizon for him, not that he knows about them, that's going to be a real headache for yeah, him. Taki taking out Electrolyze and not cybering Static Hazard and then running into lingering souls is very painful for this I mean, deck. His opponent gave him the information. We saw a Godless Shrine and, and Marsh Flats and that sort of thing in, uh, in game number one, so that perhaps should have been on Gregoire's uh, mind as he headed into game two. Yeah, but he's not very familiar with Modern as far as I know. I mean, it, I think he even plays more Legacy than Modern. Oh, really? Yeah. He's, he's, a looking, he's, he's a looking for his Marsh casualties. He's a good one to pick up for the Pro Tour, the Team Pro Tour. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah it could be a, a nice one. It could just slide in there. So we see another Inquisition, and it's going to be Snip Snap hitting the bin here. Tiago's not going to uh, flashback anything this time around. Gregoire draws. It's that Celestial Purge that was left on top. And he ships back to Duroc. Duroc struggling to find his second land here. Duroc cybered into some sort of Duroc deck. No? Uh. That was excellent. I really wish I hadn't brought that out so early. How are we going to get past this Moraine? Supreme Verdict for Gregoire. That's going to be a, an important tool in, <laughs> in fighting the Supreme Verdicts. But Thoughtseize may have something to say about that. Duroc is just uh, ripping off the top of his library. He, uh, and he's not able to find this second land, but still interacting pretty meaningfully, Moraine. Yep. Uh, that's the, kind of the advantage of, of a deck with so much discard. It's also mainly Kristoff not putting up any fight. I mean, mm. if he would have had a, a Johnny, tap your land, keep it tapped for, for mm. forever. Jeez, yeah. yeah. Well, it's not too late. Gregoire does have, of course, another draw step I in think front of him. Did he side it out? Uh, probably not. It seems like a good card in the matchup. Steam Vents coming into play tap now for Gregoire. So a Johnny Vengeance off the top, Moraine? Well, as a, as a Belgian... As a Belgian, you're very good at showing neutrality and, yeah. and no sense of bias whatsoever, so... So, whatever he draws. <laughs> <laughs> very good. <laughs> However, the cards... Oh, the lightning still, bolt. It is a bolt off the top. There we go. Alastair Duroc lives to fight another day. And it's going to be Thoughtseize again. This is the fourth discard spell. Duroc absolutely tearing Gregoire's hand to bits. And away goes the Celestial Purge. So, Gregoire still left with plenty of interaction, but he's going to want to draw some action here now. What can he find? Ooh. It's another lightning bolt. Mismatch lightning bolts as well. Rather problematic here for the Belgian, but all the same, he's doing his need best. Look at that. Street Wraith. Need, need some more. Cycle Street Wraith. Oh, no. It's a Death Shadow this time. 2-2. So two, two. Two, one mana 2-2. Uh, two, two. Uh, uh, you don't want a path to exile. You don't no. want to bowl it. Yeah, you don't. Oh, he oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. He is on this bolt plan. Yeah. Maureen, we talked about this sideboarding. That's three copies of Lightning Bolt that he's got. And, and maybe it is not Bolt Snap Bolt. That's how he's seeing his way clear. Come on, Alice. Alice Dwar, cycle. Go down to nine. Uh oh, look at that. Triple Bolt coming in. So Alistair Duroc down to nine after having cycled this Street Wraith. Gregoire with enough in hand to burn his opponent out. Blood Crypt is going to make that even easier for Gregoire here. And uh, could the Belgian be sniffing at a win here on the back of this burn? Yeah. The, show the, triple, <laughs> bolt. the triple bolt. <laughs> the triple bolt, he says. Bolts over mountains. I've absolutely got you. And uh, Moraine, this is what we see come out of the Jeskai control deck. Blue-white control cannot win the game like this. It, 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 when you're a Death Shadow player sitting down against, you know, uh, just straight up blue-white control, you can play as, as loose as you can go down to one and it's not going to matter here. Yep. Whereas against Jeskai, you've got to respect the fact that they, they may just bolt you out of the game, especially with Snapcaster Mage. And that's what we saw here. Yep, that's indeed what... It's a bit of a... Unfortunate that he didn't get to see the Lingering Souls. Yeah. Because he would certainly have adapted his cyber plan. So let's see. Uh, I don't think he, he, c he can figure it out. Well, I mean, rest, rest in Peace is also very good against the Lingering Souls. Like, all of the good cards against it are in a cyber. That could be... Rest White in peace, fall. Electrolyze. Is it Static Caster? Gregoire looks at him, he's like, I don't need these. I just no, won that no, game, no. I just won that game perfectly. Yeah. Bolt, bolt, bolt. Deck's unbeatable. <laughs> <laughs> bolt you. Bolt, 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 triple bolt. There we go, he's like a riveter on a construction site. Bolts all over the place here. And now Duroc, after having been equalised, he's going to have to get up and about. And uh, perhaps, I mean, look, without being too unkind to Duroc, with never really being in that game, he, he didn't draw a second land until turn yeah. four, five hundred. So, you know, full credit to 
you know him for, for doing the best that he could. But uh, all those thought seasons, all those shocks, they added up. At the end of the day, Gregoire with the triple bolt. Already one of the, the better moments for day one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One will remember. Will be, uh, Especially how he did it. He yeah, just like, course. triple bolt. Yeah. Show it. Got him. One of them's mismatched as well. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> So well, an interesting hand here for Gregoire. A little bit slower. Double Cryptic and a Vendillion uh, click in addition to Vault and a couple of lands. I don't like this one. Uh, knowing, knowing Christoph, I knew he would keep, but it's so slow. So, <laughs> so obviously, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's pretty obvious that uh, you and Christoph are yeah. friends, acquaintances. Yeah, yeah. You're, uh, you're close, on top of this guy. Clo close friends. Close friends. Yeah. So you know what he's all about. Maybe you yeah. can give us he, a bit he, of an insight he to likes, what's going he on. He likes himself some good old Crypto Command. I okay. mean, he, it's, it's hard to convince him to, to mulligan a three lands to Crypto Command hand. Okay, well, we'll see if it's going to be enough here. I mean, the card is absolutely busted. And if there's a card that's going to keep your head above water, it is going to be Cryptic Command. But uh, I don't know, Moraine. Vendillion Click hitting the bin, thanks to the Inquisition of Kozilek. Duroc obviously not too worried about the Lightning Bolt. What is the white card in Ellis Dwarf's hand? Here we have the Totsis. It was an Inquisition of Kozilek, though. <laughs> Totsis, of course, can't pick any card. Inquisition of Coast like cannot take the cryptic commands, so it could only take uh, lightning bolt or vendillion click. So that looks like a is that a blade splicer? No, nah, that, that would surprise me. That a would lot. very that'd be surprising as well. But uh, Moraine Simon and I were talking earlier about how coverage gives you a very specific set of skills, and one of those is identifying card art based on tiny fractions <laughs> of the uh, of the card itself. So that was that was what jumped out in my little in I my little catalog. I think you'll have to work a little bit harder. I think I may indeed. One. Yeah, I may indeed have to work a little bit harder here. Blood Crypt coming down now for Duroc. Again, playing a bit fast and loose with his life total here. And already, already one bolt in hand. Yeah, I know. We've seen this before. That's it. Fast and loose. The Hamish Blake on the uh, on the right hand side of your screen to G Christoph Gregoire's Andy Lee. Keep playing it nice and uh, safe at 20 life. And a 2 2 Death Shadow. You can't bolt it though, can you? You can bolt it, and then he cycles three trade. Yeah. And then it's a 4 4. Yeah. And especially because Christoph knows that Alasdwar saw his hand. Mm. I don't think he's going to bolt it. Well, he, c he should probably figure out that he would not let Christoph keep the bolt mm. if if it's just but a 2 But these are the subtle mind games. These are these yeah, mind games that go on. Maybe, maybe. He just doesn't, maybe he just doesn't have it. The problem is if you wait, you yeah. have to do it now or don't do it. Because yeah. if you wait and he plays a fetch land, He's doing it. He's doing it. Has he got it? Well, he, oh, could, he, yeah, get two, he get two damage. Yeah, yeah. So it's sort of like a shock upstairs here for Duroc now. Um, okay, I've, I've renegotiated that white card now. looks like Daybreak Coronet. That's not possible. I know it's not possible, but that's... <laughs> it's like a computer recognition. You know when you say, uh, play whatever, and it goes, did you mean this instead? we got to figure this out. Tarmogoyf. Flooded Strand hits the bin. What card is it? I'm sure the chat... We should just look at the chat. I'm sure they figured it out. Yes. You guys help us out here. Eagle what, eyes what around card? the world. It's a white card. We don't know what it is. It I might be some promo version. It looks like it's got a lean in on, on, on it. What's the card in hand for Alasdor Darok? A white card. A white card Come of on, some chat. description. Help us out. What do we got? So Gregoire now with his second copy of Vendillion Click. I like this card post board. I bring it in against nearly everything. Yeah. So why don't you like it main deck now? Uh, because uh, in in it dies to every piece of removal that they then take out after, uh, in in the in game two. Good point. It's a resilient threat. It's not a resilient threat. It's a it's a an efficient threat. Interacts with their hand. There aren't many matchups where you don't bring in Vendillion Click. I don't think. So guesses from the chat include uh, Solemnity, Timely Reinforcements. <laughs> timely Reinforcements in the aggro deck? Yep. I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised as well. Entreat the Angels. <laughs> Vendillion click coming down for Gregoire. Oh, it's the, the modern Masters Ranger of Eos. It's Ranger of Eos. Of there course. We go. Of course. We cracked the case, ladies and gentlemen. We did it. We did it. There we go. Fuzzy nut, 1991, snagged it. Did they? Well done. The fuzziest of nuts <laughs> managed to call call a shoot from the hip. Do you take something here? Because he's on. 
gonna be a tough battle for Kristoff anyway. He does have double cryptic. I mean, if he's some, if there's something he's looking forward to, it's casting double cryptic in on consecutive turns. Yeah, that's exactly what Greg was in the yeah, business to do here. He's on six though. Pre precarious life total for him. He's thinking about the Vendillion click here. He's taking the Colligan's command. I think I like it because it would even let Alice Dwar return a three trade and let Kristoff discard. And Kristoff only got three cards in hand, so not that many. Ooh, engineered explosives off the top here for Gregoire. Not too bad, but I think he'll have to cryptic command. If he wins this game, he's, sh he's showing us he's a real master. Okay. This is not a game a lot of people would win. Double cryptic in hand for Gregoire. As you mentioned, it was it's one of his favorite cards. We're going to see tap draw. The old life raft mode here on cryptic command. Obviously, you want to be doing stuff like counter draw, or if you're really a head bounce draw. But tap draw is certainly going to give you the breathing space you, you may need. Think twice the draw here for Gregoire. And Duroc now with uh, further plays to make, should he choose to. He's going to ship. Interesting choice. A swamp in hand, choosing not to play it there. Uh, the double think twice when you're short on mana. Yeah, a little bit awkward here now. It, it would have been good if he had drawn a land. He could have played the engineered explosives and then still cryptic command. But now he's got to say go, even a snapcaster mage won't get him out of it because... Well, it would actually because it can flash back the path to exile. Mm hmm. Because, yeah, so. Uh, Snapcaster Mage is still a good draw. But if he would have drawn a land, it would have been so much better. He could have played the Engineer of Flows, then Crypto Command, tap, and draw. Then next turn, blow up, and then he only needs to find an answer to the Tarmogoy. This is the thing about this this double cryptic play here is that it's not advancing him at, at all. It's not moving his, his game plan forward as Lightning Bolt is the draw now for Gregoire. He's just treading water. And here is the Ranger of Eos. Slash Daybreak Caronet slash Blade Splicer. Yeah, and the reason why the Rock didn't play it last turn is because he had to fetch a Godless Shrine to get it, and he didn't want to take two more damage. He no. didn't want to go to six. Okay. So actually well played by Alazvar. So that's what we saw last turn. Now, of course, uh, tapping out for this Ranger of Eos. And an Ajani Vengeant, the draw for Gregoire here. Yeah, but neither of these cards actually save him, right? Oh, he could... Lightning Helix will be able to gain him three, but then he's nine, still but taking he's still a heap dead. on the crackback. He, he really needed to draw a land instead of the double Tink Twice. He might have to fire off Tink Twice, but there's no cards that save him, I think. No, even something like a Detention Sphere may be too little too late at this stage. Camera having a little play with us. Yeah, fiddling around there. And Duroc, of course, his hand buffed up by that Ranger of Eos snagging the two new Death Shadows. Is there a way for Gregoire to dig himself out of this hole? Looking at the hand that he's got in front of him, it doesn't. Si there are no solutions that are immediately jumping out of this Himmerain. He once again needs a two-mana Supreme Verdict, which doesn't exist. There is a three-mana one, the, the black one. Mm-hmm. Anger of the Gods, uh, obviously acting in, in many cases as, as, a, as a sweeper, but right now, no, not doing its best work. Hmm. So Gregoire here, poised, looking at down the barrel of a, of a loss here, unfortunately for him. He doesn't seem to have the tools he needs. The varied mana costs of the threats opposing him means that the engineered explosives is a little bit of a ham sandwich at this stage. I think... Uh if he would have had one more land, he could have done it. Bolt the Ranger of Eos. Bolt the Ranger of Eos and then a Jenny Vengeant. Well, I actually can survive. Yeah. There's he's explosives. Engineer's explosives on one and Bolt the Ranger. But then next turn he's in. Whoa. The Rock is, look at this. He's like sitting down to eat here. He's rubbing his hands together, having a great time. Yeah, kill the Dead Shadow Bolt. But how away. big is Bolt? It's, uh, how big is Goyf? Creature instant land artifacts so four there's no sorcery right oh there is so, so it's five yeah crystal down to one we go down to one Ooh, now look at that driven despair uh is it is it is that it or is it no it's it uh it may be claim to fame oh yeah yeah works well with ranger yes indeed works well with, uh, uh, with uh, uh death shadow with death shadow all of these cards johnny vengeant now comes down gonna keep that uh this fellow tapped here, but that's not going to matter because we're going to see claim to fame here. Steal the win. 
out of nowhere. Look at this. Very powerful card here, this Aftermath card, giving it plus 2, plus 0 oh in haste after re-unearthing uh, that Death Shadow. And I tell you what, a tidy win here for Alistair Duroch. Yeah. Christoph didn't really draw well with the Cryptic Commands. He, he drew two useless cards, never was able to play the thing twice, didn't mm -hmm. have the mana for it, didn't have the time for it. I mean, would this game have gone better had he had the rest in peace? I guess so. I mean, the Tarmogoyf wouldn't have done anything. There would have still been the dead yeah. shadow, but he had the engineered explosive for that. Claim to flame, flame wouldn't have done anything uh, with the rest in peace in play. So had that lightning yeah. bolt have been a rest in peace, it would have been a little bit different. Obviously, we saw the power of, of, of bringing in these lightning bolts and, and, and staying on the burn plan, Moraine, during game number two, where the triple bolt took Duroc out of nowhere. But of course, uh, it wasn't good enough in game number three with Duroc able to uh, outvalue his opponent, essentially Ranger of Eos, claim, claim to fame and what have you. That's just about it for the time being, my friends. On the other side of this, however, we're going to get underway with some Time Walk magic. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. Plenty more coming from GP Birmingham in just a few moments.
Welcome back to the booth, ladies and gentlemen, live coming at you from GP Birmingham. My name's Riley. I'm joined by Moraine, of course. We've just seen our first table uh, all done and dusted, finished up there, but we've got some time for some more live magic before we get stuck into our time walk pieces. So down in the feature match area, we still have some players going at it for game number three, and we'll be heading down there to check in with how those things are going. We saw Tron get up in game uh, in, in round number one, of course, Tron taking apart blue-white control uh, in the hands of Sarah Pedro. Uh, a green-black approach to the deck, which is, for me is quite an interesting angle to explore, yep. right? Haven't seen it before either. And uh, with cards like Fatal Push, with cards like Collective Brutality... Uh, Might actually be the cards you want to play in this form. I mean, Fatal Push is absolutely bonkers right course. now. Of course, it is. Absolutely. It, it, it will deal with many of the threats in the format uh, just for, you know, the low, low price of one mana, right? Might, might be one of the best cards in the format. Full stop. After... Snap After Snap Custom Age? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. That's my that's my boy. That's for sure. That's it. Tiago Chan, of course, the best card in modern. I don't think anyone's going to disagree with that. Um, but anyway, of course, no Snap Custom Age in the, in, the, uh, in the Tron list, of course. But Green Black, I think, I mean, traditionally, Moraine, we've seen um, Green Red. Green Red has always been the sort of the color pairing for the, for the Tron lists uh, with, you know, the, the Chromatic Stars, Chromatic Spheres, whatever else. I think Green is a, a sorry, I think obviously Green is the, uh, the obvious choice. It gives you Ancient Stirrings. Black might be a great support color here. Yep. Uh, and what was red for uh, again? Well, we had things pyroclasm. like pyro pyroclasm and, yeah, and ancient grudge and this sort yeah, of thing. Pyroclasm not very good right no. now. Ancient grudge narrow but good. Mm. I mean, in against affinity, it's the card you want. But I you mean, just black. Play, just play natural state or, yeah. or you know. If you have better removal than pyroclasm, then it seems like black is is a good choice. Yeah. We we have blue versions as well running yeah. around. We have mono green versions also running around. But I think black is really good. And uh, uh, one of the cards I want to explore that it opens up, of course, we talked about Fatal Push being excellent removal, but, but Collective Brutality. Go ahead. It's actually the best card you can have against Bird, which is yeah. one of your worst matchups probably when you're playing Tron. So yeah. it seems like a good uh, choice. It's a huge utility card with a lot of punch, and uh, maybe we'll see a bit more of it now. It's time to get down to the feature match area for game number three between uh, our two players who are ready to get underway. Sarah Pedro, as we mentioned, playing against uh, uh, Suzanne Bornilov here. She's on Affinity. So we've got uh, some real old school uh, modern magic going on here. Affinity's been around, of course, forever. And Tron has also made a name for itself at the top tables over the last couple of years. And uh, not the most explosive start for the Affinity player here. Pedro now. She didn't draw. She was really looking for a second Tron piece there because mm. she has the Sylvan Scrying uh, to find the third one, but she has to go with the turn two Lenore Wastes. Uh, does find the mine, and next turn she might have a second, I believe, Sylvan Scrying, but that's like delaying yourself one turn. And that's uh, that's huge against Affinity, which uh, really is going to punish you if you if you stumble. This is very much the fun place, the format, along with Burn. You know, you, you have to come respecting the robots, otherwise they will just uh, beat your face in. Although, as I said, Suzanne Bonilov not off to the the quickest start Affinity decks are capable of. Oh, look at that! Is that a Blood Moon? Ooh, yes, it is. yes, it is. A turn two Blood Moon. How about that, Sarah Pedro? That's going to slow her down enormously. We did see last time the fact that the, the Tron deck can play through to the late game and just cast seven drops off seven lands, but Affinity is not going to let uh, Pedro do that. No. She, Pedro does have Expedition Map to search the basic forests, and then she she is actually quite close to cracking Oblivion Stone, so she's... N oh, she's got Natural State, mm. so she's got the answer. Got the answer to the Blood Moon there. We saw Natural State uh, brought to bear against Spreading Seas in round number one here. So she can Expedition Map, get the Forest, then deal with the uh, Blood Moon, play Sylvan's Crying, and then next turn she's got herself set up to, to clear, the clear the board. Born Love adding a Master of Ethereum. No. To no, the you don't have but uh, it's going to be power plant here and uh, Sarah Pedro with playing with fire here she doesn't have the green source for for the disenchant oh she realized oh, she's she just realized it very quickly Wait a having sec. a quick look at her hand oh i don't have the forest i do need the forest do i need this basic mountain here <laughs> do i need to search out this Urza's basic mountain i do not no 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 so she's uh, on top of that Got across it very quickly. O almost a sort of force of habit, like a rote sort of yeah. thing. Oh, I've got a mine, I've got a, uh, a tower. I'll go and get the power plant. But uh, no, luckily catching herself in the nick of time here so she can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this Blood Moon. And Bornilov will be... Uh, I imagine she'll have her eyebrow eyebrow eyebrows raised at that forest. She'll know that something's cooking. Sylvan's crying off the top. Pedro now. 
So now she can. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. First, destroy the enchantment. Gonna, gonna need to. Get, no, can uh, uh, no, no double green now. No, nope. ah. there's Sylvan Scrying coming down, so. If she would have natural state the Blood Moon. Ah, she's gonna do it next turn. Actually, this is quite good as well. Okay, what's going it's on? It's a here? bigger surprise. She searches up the Tron pieces now, and then next turn she'll destroy the Blood Moon, and with because she has all the mana, she will play Oblivion Stone and sweep the board. Actually, this is a good play. All right, so, uh, so kind of playing the cards close to the chest here, Sarah Pedro, and making sure Bornilov is going to have some difficulty sniffing out her plan. Mountain coming down for Bornilov. We're going to see, is it going to be a Cranial Plating, or have we got an Akban Revager? Nah. And Oblivion Stone says non-land, right? So, we... S oh, but he's going to tap out. Look at that, he's going to equip, then have no mana left. Yes, Bornilov here now yeah. is coming down with this uh, with his cranial plating. That's huge on the Ornithopter, the 0-2 becomes a million, million two. Yeah, but does, did this mean that she stepped out so she cannot activate the Nexus and put all the counters from Arcbound Ravager on it? So she's going to lose whole, her whole board? She does have quite some damage though. Let's see. Uh, yes, with no creatures left for the... Uh, for the Ravager triggers here, because obviously the trick is you can put it onto an, uh, a, a Nexus if it's a creature here. But Pedro, with the next level plays now, after having searched for that power plant, we saw it last time. Here's Natural State on the Blood Moon. Oh no. Oh no, says uh, says Bornilov, because that has opened up Pedro here. She has Tron active. She's got as much mana as she needs. O-Stone comes down. Bam! And immediately is snapped off, and the reason why—I mean, why are we seeing this happen here in the, in her main phase, Moraine? Because of the the nexus. If she waits, then uh, Suzanne will have one land to activate the nexus and put all the counters from Argon Ravager on it. So now we see them all go away, including all of those uh, plus one plus one counters that the Arcbound Ravager could have generated. So very tidy play from uh, from Sarah Pedro. We were immedi we immediately, last uh, turn, we, when she played the forest and didn't play the natural state, thing. what's going on here? Open up your mana, l let it happen. But this has just been an absolute blowout. And uh, the follow-up play with an Ink Moth Nexus now and a Steel Overseer. she's taking over. She's going to play a Walking Ballista now. Going to kill the Steel Overseer and still have the... Th this is game, boys. Yeah, uh, Sarah Pedro on five life has stabilized absolutely masterfully. And, and what a what a performance. There is, there is one... Fear though. Oh dear. Galvanic Blast. Galvanic when Blast. I think she's at four. Oh, yes, after having taken one from the Bleak Moth Nexus here. Get those life totals updated. Make sure they're all uh, right as rain. So, with nine mana here for Sarah Pedro, she's considering her next move. Fatal Push, Fatal Push, uh, World Breaker, Sylvan Scrying, and our good friend the walking ballista hanging out in her hand yeah keep up the lanor ways so she can fatal push make a 4-4 four four, kill the steel overseer this is looking good yeah this is looking very good here for sarah pedro away goes the steel again during the main phase so it can't pump itself up or the blink moth nexus indeed and that nexus can get shot out of the sky by the walking ballista yeah and suzanne doesn't even have three artifacts for the galvanic blast should she draw it she does have the nexus but that one can be killed yeah immediately so one card in Bornilov's hand here. These two players tied at one and one, and Bornilov knows the writing's on the wall. Sarah Pedro seems to be turning the corner here off the back of this uh, walking ballista. I like destroying the mountain here. And we're going to see. Here it is. Yes, indeed. Worldbreaker coming down. Get the mountain. Get the mountain. No, ah. it's going to be Inkmoth Nexus instead. Pedro obviously confident that her five life is going to be enough to buffer her against Galvanic Blast. Ink Moth Nexus hits the bin. She might actually have a two-turn kill. 20, uh, 21 is a little bit too much. But she does have another Tron land, right? Oh, no. Well, she will in a second here. Uh, she's, she's got one mana left, so she's actually using that one. Okay. Deal four, 20. How much does she have next turn? How big is World Bigger? Six, seven? Uh, five, five, seven. 5-7, five, so 5-9, five, seven. Five, seven, nine, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. She's like a little bit short. Well, Blood Moon number 2 comes down for Bornilov here. A little bit too late. A little bit too late. 
And Ostone off the top now for Sarah Pedro, but she is firmly ahead. She's got a snoot a long, long way ahead of this game here, thanks to that uh, next level play we saw with the natural state in addition uh, to the Ostone earlier. Another Sylvan scrying now. Go and fetch up another land. And this is what we see out of these green Tron decks. They just, their hits keep coming. They can keep snagging these Tron pieces, keep ramping up their mana. And with cards like Walking Ballista, very welcome addition to these decks, Moraine, in, in terms of just giving a, a, a place to, to dump all of this uh, extra colorless mana yeah, you're generating. It's good on turn two. Uh, well, good. it's decent on turn two. Mm -hmm. And it's just absolutely bonkers when you have Tron active. It's actually very well positioned. Because also against Dead Shadow, they'll just go down to three life, thinking, yeah, yeah you're Tron, what you're going to do? Yep. Then you play six, it's a colorless uh, six mana Walking Ballista. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, six mana Lightning Bolt, getcha. The colorless Lightning Bolt. So activate the Ballista in for 10 now. So Bornolov on the clock in a major way. Aspire of Industry, the only card in her hand. What, is she, what can she find at the top of her library there? It is a Vault Scourge. Vault Scourge not going to be enough. It can get shot out of the sky, of course. And a handshake from Bornolov as Sarah Pedro. Super impressive stuff from her. Yeah, she played very well. Absolutely demolished uh, blue-white control in, in round number one. And in round number two has taken apart this Affinity deck as well. So very, very well done to her and welcome back to the booth, my friends. My name's Riley. Of course, I'm joined by Moraine Liber, and it's a great pleasure to have your company around the world, wherever you are, choosing to join us.